What's up, y'all, and welcome into the Jack Vita Show. I'm Jack Vita, here for another exit interview for Deal or No Deal Island. Today, we've got the runner-up joining us for a long-form interview. It's going to be a lot of fun. It is Mrs. Amy McCoy. Welcome back to the Jack Vita Show. Thank you. I'm super excited. Thanks for having me. It's great to have you back. We spoke with you about three or so weeks ago, got your take on all things with Miranda. You guys talked about some of your memories from the show, so... If people are interested in that, go back and check it out. Um, but we've got a lot to cover today. And it's going to be so much fun because you don't have to worry about spoiling anything. I know. <laughs> That's the hardest part. You kind of have to rehearse, like, what can I say? Because, you know, I've already lived it and I try not, I don't want to spoil anything for viewers or my family. So, yeah, this should be a fun one. Can also, since the last time we talked to you, you pocketed 75 grand, so congrats. Thank you. How many Venmo requests have you gotten from people? <laughs> well, the most of them are from my kids. My, my son thinks <laughs> he's getting a brand new car. I promised my husband a new truck. So I'm like, when does mom get to like, you know, indulge? So it's been a, it's been a funny conversation around my house. All the kids have their hand out immediately. <laughs> Unfortunately, you couldn't get the big, big money, but you did get to come home with a nice uh, nice cash prize there. I'm curious to know, before we get into all things, speaking of money, is Miranda, are you splitting that 20 grand with Miranda, or are you? is she taking it all? So, um, Miranda and I did the excursion two together. Um, I told her, go up there, get that money, take this money for you. I'm so proud of you. Um, for getting it. And then what wasn't shown on TV was when it was all done and we all came back, Joe asked, um, who's willing to admit they got the personal offer. Um, Nick and Miranda raised their hand immediately. And then Joe said, who's willing to split the personal offer with their teammate and Miranda and Nick raised their hands immediately. Um, Alyssa got the personal offer. She didn't admit it or split with the teammate. So um, none of that was shown, but the two that did split was Steph, Nick, Miranda, and I. So I was like, no, you're not splitting this with me. You didn't. And she was like, well, if you wouldn't have knocked the, knocked the amount down so quick, we could be in the bottom too. So um, she split with me. I was emotional because that's $10,000 is a lot of money. Um, so at the end of the show, I actually took home eighty five thousand uh, thanks to Miranda. So I'm gonna I'm gonna be sending her a sweet little uh, birthday yeah. gift. <laughs> yeah, get her get her something nice. Take her out to a nice dinner or vacation oh, yeah. or something like that. For sure. <laughs> awesome. Well, Amy, congratulations on just the game you played, getting all the way to the final two. Uh, I I want to start with your elimination and then we'll touch on some of the events from the maze and get your take on all that we just heard stephanie's take on it yesterday um okay so you get to the final two obviously very exciting how long because it was it was strange to me watching the show how quickly things happened like we suddenly went from having four people on the show to one person left on the show in a matter of minutes and as a viewer, I would have liked to, you know, maybe get a little more reflection time, send you guys off a little slower, have a longer final challenge. I'm curious to know how much time was there in between the maze challenge and the rope challenge? Did that happen back to back or was that like a day later? Um, that was a day later. So we did the maze challenge, double elimination. Rob goes home, Steph goes home. Jordan and I go back to camp and um, we were exhausted, you know, from the May stuff. And then the next day was the rope challenge. So they weren't back to back as far as the same day. Um, but it, I think it was probably a little less than 24 hours between the two. Okay. Okay. So that challenge, fair to say, not exactly in your wheelhouse, like your greatest strengths. Not at all. Um, I'm not scared of heights, so the heights didn't bother me. Um, but you know, I'm four foot eleven, so <laughs> I didn't have any idea. Um, I looked at it, and when we walked up, because we had no idea what we're walking into. So when Jordan and I walked up, we're both like, "Oh my gosh!" Like it's the rope. So I didn't have any idea. Like once you step foot on that rope, I assumed it would move. It's gonna move a little bit, right? I had no idea it was gonna be. It was gonna be able to sway so much. 
And then, you know, the ropes that we're grabbing onto at the top, I I didn't know if they were like, you know, in place or if they were going to move. Um, so, you know, being four foot 11, I'm like, man, if I can just reach higher to the top of the rope where it's connected to the other straight one, like I might could get more sturdiness. So when I looked at it, I, I knew immediately, I was like, this is not going to be, um, a comp that I'm going to be super confident at, but it's also not anything I'm going to give up on. I'm going to play every angle. I'm going to do any and everything I can once I get up there and get my bearings and, and see what's going on. Um, definitely not in my wheelhouse. I was hoping for a mental comp. Um, I, I would bet on myself, um, every time when it comes to mental comps, because I was memorizing everything. Um, people were, you know, as somebody went home, they weren't a name anymore. They were a number. So like Branson was number one. So anytime someone said Branson in my mind, I'm like, Oh, you mean one because I'm, I'm memorizing any and everything I can hoping that the further I can get in the game, that it might be mental. So in the maze, when it came down to the mental comp and they're like, Hey, how many cases? Um, I was the first to get it. I got it really quick. Um, before any of the other three and I was I was off off in the maze running so I was thinking towards the end like once it came down to the final two and it was it was clear Jordan and I were were going to compete I was hoping and praying and like wishing to all the island gods that the final challenge would be something that would at least be partially physical partially mental like the maze challenge was um but I walked in and I saw that and I was like Oh my gosh. <laughs> but I knew, I knew I was going to give it 110%. I wasn't going to give up and I did it. Um, so I'm, you know, I have to be proud of myself for, you know, walking onto the Island, looking at all the other women and men. Um, not a lot of people probably bet on me to make even final four, you know? So I was proud of myself. I had to pay, play more of a mental game than a lot of people because I'm not physically fit as they are, but Whatever I did worked. I got second place, and I don't think that's anything to hang your head about. I talked to my mom the other day because this is what really only matters is like, first of all, what your mother thinks in right. general, what moms think. That's like most important above like what I think, um, what any of us think, really. Yeah. But it's always great to get the mom's perspective on reality TV. So I talked to her on Mother's Day. Great FaceTime, great catching up, talking, everything. So, Here's what she said. I said, what do you think about the Deal or No Deal Island finale? She's like, I think Rob's done. I think Amy deserves it. I think she's played the best game of the three. Oh, my gosh. Oh, that's going to make me tear up. Wow. That is so, so, so sweet. Thank you so much for saying that because my most of my inbox is just hate, like, you're going to hell. You swore on your kids. How could you do that? You're such a bully. You played terrible, you know, like all the things. And I'm like, I didn't, I didn't go on a reality show uh, to be the next Boston Rob. I had no idea Boston Rob was even going to be there. Um, I'm 42 years old. So I didn't go on there, you know, to try to make a career out of reality TV. I didn't go on there to, to be a model, you know, like I went on there to try to change my family's lives and that's exactly what I did. I woke up every day and I'm like, it, this is a game. Like in real life, I'm I'm a really kind, giving person. I have a huge friend circle. They've all known me my entire life. So to see a different side of me on TV, they were like, yeah, play the game, you know? So every morning I woke up and I was like, Amy, this is a game. Do not let your emotions get involved. Do not, you know, let anybody's journey or anybody's why persuade you into thinking the reason you're here is not as important as theirs. So it was a game. Um, the edits are a little bit crazy. Um, I touched on this in a couple of, of other interviews. Um, you know, I think when America really started hating me and calling me a bully was when Aaron and I had the confrontation at the picnic table. Um, but what they didn't see, and Aaron has since went on Reddit and a lot of different um, platforms and said, Amy wasn't bullying me. Um, I did say something to her at Temple that wasn't so kind. Um, so she was just wanting to confront me or talk to me about it. Um, so, you know, people form an opinion about me. And again, I, I didn't come on here to try to win America's hearts. I wanted to change my family's life. Um, so I really appreciate the sweet comments when they come uh, because 
they they are pretty neck and neck with the with the really mean rude ones like I'm a terrible mom and things like that at first it was hard to hear because I know who I am as a person but then I was like Amy like you signed up for this you know not everybody's gonna like you just because you have blonde hair or because you have green eyes you know like somebody's gonna find a reason not to like you um but I really think a lot of the people that hate me and Steph is it, and me and Steph both are people that are pro Rob. <laughs> so I don't think they necessarily hate Steph and I, I think they hated the fact that we were going against Rob. Um, but I mean, this is a game. Like I'm a huge Boston Rob fan. I've watched him on survivor and amazing race. Like I am a huge fan, but just because I don't want to align with him doesn't mean I hate him. So I right. think that's a lot of, a lot of uh, misconception as well. I'm a huge fan of Rob. Um, but I knew as long as Rob's in the game, I cannot win. And I didn't want to align myself with Rob and then have to turn around and backstab him because I knew I didn't want to take him or Aaron or not. I did want to take Aaron to the end, but when Aaron was so close with Rob, I knew neither one of them were going to be team Amy. Um, so I, I didn't want to, I, I wanted to be straight up front. Like I am not going to align with Rob. I'm not aligned with Aaron. Like I'm going to form my own deal um, and see how it pans out. And so that's what I did. Well, my mom said you played a great game and you deserved it. Unfortunately, that, what we talked about challenge wasn't exactly what you were hoping for. And I, I will say as a viewer, like I was hoping that we'd have a challenge that would last longer than like five minutes. Like I want to see something epic. I want to see a compilation of all of yeah. the. Like I thought it would be fitting when each week we're the bankers asking a question of, are you meticulous? Are you powerful? Are you, you know, intuitive? Tenacious, yeah. Like, and let's see the compilation of all that. those things. So it'd be cool if you don't have to include every challenge, but do something where you got to shoot at a target and then do that, like, long uh, follow the rope and get the case, like something that's endurance and stamina-based, um, something that's a puzzle. So I will say that as much as I love this season, and I certainly did, and I've been hyping it up all along, and I'm excited for season two and everything like that, I do think this final challenge left a little more to be desired, personally. I agree with you. Um, even the night before going into it, I really thought it was going to be um, kind of like the maze, but even more. Like, answer this trivia question, and then go to round two, and then in round two, you have to crawl over alligator, like something crazy. Yeah. Like, just really, like, the most fear and the like challenging us in almost every way that we'd been challenged to some degree um so i was really really surprised when we got there and it was just tight rope here we are whoever gets there is done i was hoping for a little bit more too i was hoping that it wasn't 100 percent physical or 100 percent mental or 100 percent face your fears um i was hoping it would it would be a, a at least two or three you know back to back somethings that we have to fight through but in season one, um, I had the time of my life. I would do it again a hundred times over, probably in a little bit better shape than what I am. But <laughs> I'm not a gym rat. I, I own that. I, I When I found out I was going on the show, I didn't like do a crash diet to lose 30 pounds and, and work <laughs> out. Like, I am who I am. Like, I wanted to go on there. Like, I'm a mom of three. I'm 42. I've worked my whole life. Like, I'm not, I'm on here literally to change my life and no other reason than that. So, you know, I, I've been fat shamed. I've been told that I talk to country and like all the things, but I'm like, you know what? That's who I am. Not everybody's going to like you. Not everyone's going to hate you. Like I'm, I'm just rolling with, with the punches and what you see is what you get. All right. You mentioned the country thing and we're going to veer off from Dondi and I'm going to give you a fun question. So we're not talking all the, all the <laughs> negative stuff. You got the Cowboys uh, pennant in the background. Today's a schedule drop. Have you been paying any attention to what the who the Cowboys are playing next year? Oh yeah. So my husband and I, we are diehard Cowboy fans. We were my whole family's from Texas. Um, so he and I both when we first met, I think it was on our first date, we were like, Okay, who's your college team? Who's your NBA team? And we didn't agree on either one of those. And so we're like, <laughs> I was like, Okay, who's your NFL team? You're gonna make fun of me. Nobody likes them. And he was like, I'm a Cowboys fan. I was like, Me too. <laughs> so we bonded over that. Um, this is our media room. So it's an office slash game room. I have my own TV. You know, my husband would be playing Fortnite and I'm watching my date lines and stuff. <laughs> so 
We are very, we're best, he's my best friend on the entire planet. Um, we're so connected. So we're pretty much attached at the hip. So where he goes, I go or vice versa. So I'm like, we can agree on the Cowboys. Okay. We can decorate <laughs> the Cowboys. That's both our teams. And I, we are paying attention to the schedule. And we try to go to at least two or three games a year. Um, if anybody's on my Instagram, they can see, you know, we're always in Cowboy games. <laughs> Is there so we're very much you're... paying attention to the drop. Is there anyone that you really want to see them play this year or would like to go watch them play against? You know, I would, the Ravens. The Ravens. We've got to see a lot of teams. Um, we're Oklahoma City. Dallas is th- about three hours away, three-ish. Mm-hmm. So we go to a lot of games, but I told them, you know, we have some really good friends and family members that are huge Ravens fans. Um, one, of, one of our friends used to play for the Ravens, so he's a diehard fan. So I'm like, if they come, so if they play, I, I we can go to Dallas. We can fly there. I don't care. Um, we both want to see the Ravens. Who's your friend? Um, his name is Lorenzo Williams. Um, yeah. He pl- yeah, he played for them. He actually coaches for um, Lawton, a Lawton school district, which is where my husband grew up. So we thought that was kind of cool. Yeah. And then my brother-in-law loves the Ravens, um, my sister's husband. So we're going to plan a big road trip and fly. And we're going to do all the things when it comes to that game. Because I'm really excited about that one. So something I was curious about, speaking of teams. Boston Rob, I did not notice the Red Sox hat on all season. It looked like he was just wearing a black hat. Was uh, there? Really? Yeah, I was wondering, were there uh, any licensing issues as to why, like, you couldn't wear a cowboy shirt or something like that on there? Um, they told us. So I'm assuming it was a licensing issue. Um, before the show, we had to basically get outfits approved. So like. Um, we couldn't have a lot of branding. Um, even they didn't even want any words. I think I had a tank top that said hustle hard or something like that. They didn't want any words, any branding. Um, so a lot of times Boston Rob's hat was backwards. Um, there might have there might have been, I didn't really pay attention to that, but there might have been a time it was it was face forward because he's from Boston. But yeah, we were told um even I think Aaron even had some under armor shorts and we got a sharp or um, wardrobe got a sharpie and like marked it out so it wouldn't be super visible i don't know if it's because they think you'd be advertising something or just licensing i'm not sure the background but we were told that it we needed yeah, to really it's something be- it's got to be something with like name image likeness or licensing or i don't know the correct legal terms on this but um like on the first couple seasons of survivor they were not able to have any of that stuff and then like around season three or season four they got the Reebok sponsorship. So then you start seeing like Reebok, like Carolina Panthers or Rob. Yeah. A, Rob actually wore a Patriots hat on his, his first season. People might not remember that because everyone thinks of the, the Red Sox cap. Was he actually wearing a Red Sox cap? Like you noticed it was a Red Sox cap or was it just a black hat? I, I You know, I just been seven months ago. I want to say <laughs> it was. I want to say okay. it was a Red Sox it cap. Was, but it was and they just backwards. kept it hidden on the show. Yeah, and I think he just wore it backwards most most okay. of the time. Gotcha. Okay, that makes sense. So, all right. Now, speaking of Rob, the breach. Let's get your take on everything here. What happens? What are your thoughts on it? Go ahead. So, you know, they told they t- they told us the rules before every excursion. They go over the. Th- this isn't on on camera, but before the excursion the rules team goes over everything in depth. If you have any questions, like they did such a great job at making sure we understood the rules. There's no confusion. Like they, they wanted everybody on equal playing ground. We had to raise our hand and agree to it, you know, being videoed on like a little phone, like you agree to the rules. You want to participate. We all agreed. Um, so we, I knew, I mean, I, Steph knew, I'm pretty sure Jordan knew. Um, and I, I may, I thought Rob knew that, You know, you cannot deliberately walk over and look at someone else's answer. I knew that. Steph said on the on the TV that she knew that. So I was really surprised when I was in the maze and I heard freeze and the game stopped completely. And I was like, what happened? Like there's been a rule breach. And so I was like, what is going on? And so a lot of time went by, probably like more than a couple of minutes went by, I guess, while they were trying to decide what is this? Is it a penalty? Are you disqualified? You know, what's going on? And then when I learned that it was because Rob went over and looked at my answer, 
I was like, wow. Like I was kind of like, my initial, uh, initial response was like, I was kind of angry. Like what? Like that's cheating. Like what? And then, and then in the, that very same moment, I was like flattered. I was like, oh yeah. my gosh, like Boston Rob had to cheat off me. Like <laughs> we've been arch nemesis the whole season. Like, and he had to look at my answer to get an angle in the game. So part of me was flattered because again, huge fan of Rob, like not, we're playing against each other. So right. not on this show, but huge fan. He's a great guy. He's a great person. He treated everybody respectfully. Um, but I was really shocked. And then I was flattered. And then I was like, why would he do that? Like, like, the, like he, we're final four and you've been killing this competition. Like, why would you cheat and put yourself at a disadvantage? But then after the competition, like, you know, he explained, Hey, my mind, I don't, I don't know if he said these words, but basically he alluded to the fact that in Survivor, we can cheat, we can look at other people's answers, and my mind just reverted back there. And so, you know, part of me is like, but you heard the rules 30 seconds before we started, just like the rest of us. But at the same time, um, not defending him because he cheated and he owned up to it, and I think that's respectable. But at the same time, I'm like, you know, I'm in this maze. I'm hitting dead ends. My mind is going completely crazy. So I can understand getting in your own head. Um, it just surprised me. Like, I, I'm surprised that that he did that. But again, he's been doing this for a very long time. He's, you, you know, when you revert back to just focusing on what you know, you know, his mind was like, I'm going to go look at the answer because that's what I would normally do. So I get it. He cheated absolutely 100%. Um but after watching the episode and hearing explanations, I can understand what, how, how he did or why he did. Okay, so the next part of all of this, I'm curious to know, is how long did that pause where it's like, okay, everyone freeze, stop. How long did that take? And what are you doing in the maze all by yourself at this point in time? So I don't know exactly how long it stopped, but it was a good... 20 30 minutes and maybe a little bit longer it felt like forever because i'm the first one in the maze my adrenaline yeah. is rushing like i'm i'm ready to just run and go after it and then i'm stopped so when i'm stopped for 15 20 30 minutes however long it well it may have been longer than that i honestly don't know because my my adrenaline was just i gotta go i gotta go any minute i gotta go i have a head start and i've got to take every second i can because they all have longer legs than me. They're all way more athletic than me. Rob's been beasting every competition. Like I, I, you know, my edge, like, what are we doing here? And so I was just sitting there. Um, I'm just sitting there waiting for an explanation. What happened? Um, I, my mind, I don't know. Do I have to go back and we're going to get a whole new question? Is my edge going to be taken away? Like, you know, I have no idea what's going on. So my mind was just racing. So in that moment, I really wasn't, like, I didn't care about how much time went by. I was like, let's go, let's go. I need to go, you know? So, but yeah, it did stop my, you know, stopped yeah. in my tracks. My adrenaline kind of was lowing down. And then yeah. I started stressing my, my, myself out about coulda, shoulda, woulda. What if I have to go back and answer another question? And then what if I'm last? And so that was really, um, did you feel like you lost your place a little bit in the maze where you kind of like, cause you're frozen and you're like, okay, where am I? Did I go that way? Did I go this way? Yeah, um, we had a map. So what I tried to focus on when during the freeze was just looking at my map, um, just trying to figure out what goes where. Um, so I don't know. It, it kind of just dampened my spirit. Like it just took me out of the out of the moment, you know. So I had to sit there, and then and they're like, "Okay, go." Like I didn't have all that adrenaline. Like I just beat everybody out. I'm going, you know. So it it you know it is what it is. It happened, but I really wish it wouldn't have. Um, it didn't affect the outcome. I still got second. I still was able to go, but it kind of just took me out of that moment, you know? Yeah, totally. Um, and that's what I, I just said to Stephanie was I thought, in my opinion, I thought that it disadvantaged you the most of the three because the two other ladies could stop, think about the puzzle a little bit. Like their brain can still keep working on that even though their hands aren't moving. We're yeah. like, you have to just stop. And you can't go anywhere in that maze. And it does slow you down when you're when yeah. your adrenaline's pumping and you're going after you're getting after it. And so I was just curious if you think that that played a reason in why you were the third person out of the maze and despite getting the head start. Um, I don't I don't know if it played a reason because I don't know if I would have still taken every dead end turn, but it definitely 
took me out of the moment, you know, like, like it definitely took me out of the headspace. I was like, I'm first, I have a lead. And by the time, by the time I learned the penalty, um, to be honest, I was kind of annoyed because I'm like, you know, again, it doesn't matter because I got, I was able to go to the finale, the finale, but it kind of was annoying because I was like, how do we know? Like he got a three minute time penalty. Like, how do we know that it wouldn't have taken him another seven minutes to get it or 10 or 15? Like, you know, he's been doing this a long time and he's still struggling for the answer. Like I beat him out of all people. So it kind of, it kind of annoyed me and it kind of dampened my spirits when I found out it was only a three minute time penalty. So a lot of things were going through my head and I was focusing on, you know, instead of focusing on this map, my mind's like, what if, what if he get past me? Cause it's only three minutes. What if he would have got it in 15 minutes and I would have a more head start. So all these questions start clouding my mind versus just being able to focus on nothing but the maze. So that kind of annoyed me a little bit, but like I said, at the same time, it didn't change the outcome. Um, had I came in like third or last, this probably would have haunted me forever. And I would have been so upset about this rule breach for here to eternity, but everything happens for a reason. Um, I was able to push through and beat him out of the maze. And, and at the end of the day, that's all that mattered. So with this, uh, okay, let me ask you this. How much, how much of a gap was there between you and Rob? How close was that? It was on the finale. It made it look like it was neck and neck, but it was not. Um, I was pretty, and I think Rob has admitted this as well. I was pretty far ahead of him. Um, By the time I was crossing, you know, I think the there was ten of those giant hurdles, whatever you want to call them, guardrails. Um, By the time I was passing, like fifth or halfway through it, he was just now coming over. and I, even though he's more athletic than me, I was like scared to death. I'm like, what if he beats me in a, in a foot race? What if he leaps these and I'm taking forever? But that kind of seeing him kind of kicked it in overdrive. And I was like, okay, Amy, fighting chance, go. And so seeing him, I kind of tried to kick it up a little bit. And then when I got onto the last, the last hurdle, because I'm, I'm, like I said, I'm sure I hit every dead end because I couldn't see anything. When I got to that last, second or last like hurdle, and, and went up to go over, I could see, because I did not know if the if the exit was left, right, front, back. I was so, like, just discombobulated. So I used the last, the second to last hurdle thing. I stood up, and I tried to get a look. And I was like, okay, when I leave here, it's to the left. So you see me leave, and I, and I get ready to go right. I'm like, no, 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 it's for the left. And so seeing that where the little arch was that I needed to run through, I just took off. I was like, I got to go. And I grabbed the case like this and just ran. Was that your proudest moment from the experience? My proudest moment from the whole experience um, was beating Rob as a whole. And I know that I know that he is that he and the American everyone else is saying, well, if, if he wouldn't have cheated off of you, um, like you didn't take him out. He took himself out. If he wouldn't have cheated off you, you wouldn't have came out of the maze, blah, blah, blah. But we don't know that. Like it could have taken him another 15 minutes to get this puzzle. And I could have already been out of the maze before. You know what I mean? Like you well, just felt- To your credit, it's like, well, why did he cheat off of you? He had to. But he's behind. You beat him in the puzzle. Like even if like, okay. You beat Boston Rob in a puzzle, not just a foot race. You beat like the yeah. all time puzzle master in reality TV in a puzzle. Yeah. So, like, Amy beat Rob. Like, you can't take that away from her. That's ridiculous. But people are, to- people are taking it away from me. And again, that's totally fine because I don't care what America thinks about me. I was there. I lived it. I know what happened. My family, my friends, my kids, my parents, like, they all know. I'm very, 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 very intelligent at a lot of things like mentally memorization. Um, but yeah, nobody, you can take that from me if you want to, but you, but you're, you're not going to take it from me personally. You can do whatever you want, but yeah, I beat Boston raw, whether it was a puzzle and a foot race. Like that was my, one of my proudest moments just because he is the goat. Like he's so freaking good at these games. So that I'm very proud of myself for that. And like I said, nobody can take that from me. I'm owning that. So 
we touched on a little bit the last time you were on this show that you're a big fan of The Amazing Race. Your mom was trying to get on Big Brother. So you've watched some reality TV. I was curious. I asked the same question to Stephanie. Uh, biggest reality TV, like, inspirations or influences? Um, you know, I really... Um... I really like, so I have different people. So like from Big Brother, I love Rachel Riley. Um, I have like, you know, everyone's like, why do you like her? She's so loud. She's so annoying. She's so blunt. And I'm like, because I honestly feel like she's being who she is. She's not putting on uh, this this front for America, you know? Like I like, I like um, Nicole Francois. I like her too, but she was just really sweet and America's sweetheart. Like I like a person that comes in like hardcore like here it is here i am i'm i'm here to do it and i just really i really really loved rachel um i really loved stephanie um on survivor yeah la grossa i thought she was amazing i loved her on survivor um and you know amazing race um obviously i'm a rachel fan so i loved what her (laughs) and her her and Alyssa were on the show i was cheering for them and their neon yellow and i'm like let's go because I I really love to see a woman um, like take charge and own who she is and not be scared of defeat and not be, you know, um, um, intimidated by like big muscles. And, you know, like I just really I'm a huge Rachel Riley fan. I'm a huge Stephanie LaGrosa fan. So those probably are my two favorites. Now, I am a I, I am a Boston Rob fan, but I will always cheer for a woman. So yeah seeing women do this is like my heart so those two are my favorite although i am a huge boston rob fan well those two it's like you want to talk about strong women and how about like like stephanie outlasting her entire tribe on survivor palau just yeah incredible incredible yeah yeah and rachel you know being a such a strong and fierce competitor winning big brother so you must have enjoyed seeing them teaming up on traders together i i could like i was literally like what is going on oh my god like it's somebody in my head like seeing them too i was like (laughs) i was fan girling out i was like oh my (laughs) matter of fact i have actually watched that season probably three times because i just i just loved watching them so much rachel Um, and stephanie oh yeah yeah. yeah, Stephanie and Rachel. I love that. And then so when that's Rachel, the main reason you've watched it three times is because of them. Oh, pretty yeah, yeah. Because awesome. I love like I just rewatch certain parts because I'm just like I love them so much. And then like <laughs> when Rachel and when Rachel's like, you guys like I am not a traitor, and she was like, and just like does the peace sign <laughs> and walks out. I'm like that's my girl. I love it. <laughs> but yeah, they're they're just um, now that I get. I, I I was a huge fan. I am a huge fan of both of them. But now that I guess I've experienced the side of reality TV and I know how, how um, physically daunting and mentally, you know, draining it is, I even have that much more respect for them because I know Rachel, I know she probably got a lot of hate, just like I'm getting hate. I'm sure Stephanie's gotten some. So just to know that you've, I mean, I could never fill their shoes, but just to know that I was in a, similar situation and um, even more respect like hats off to them yeah absolutely those are great choices two of my very favorites as well um so let's discuss a little more about Dondi. i'm really curious to know we've talked a lot about the finale um what's something that they didn't show because now you're able to talk about this season a little more freely you don't have to worry about spoiling anything. Is there anything that was not shown that you think would have played like a played a big factor in your story? Um, you know, I I feel like I played so hard. Like Jordan was playing, you know, to change her life and be a mom and, you know, maybe have to to pay for IVF treatments and things like that. Um, my story really didn't get told, but the main reason I was playing was like for my family. So Um, My mom had me at 16 years old, a very young age. Um, She chose, you know, to have me and own up Mm. to a decision she made. 
Um, therefore, my grandma played a big part in raising me. And so about a year before I even knew anything about, you know, going on Dondi, one of the reasons I wanted to do Amazing Race was to try to win the money because she is, she's had to work since she was 14 years old. She worked up until she was like 72, I think, 71. Um, she's on oxygen full time. She needs a double lung transplant, but because of her age, um, she can't do the, we can't do the lung transplant. So her health is just constantly deteriorating. Her lungs are constantly, you know, she's on, she started on oxygen just when she needed it. Now it's full blown. Um, and her and my mom sacrificed so much to raise me. Um, I was the first one in my person and my family to go to college. Like they really sacrificed a lot to try to give me the future I have. And I just really wanted to give back to them. Um, I wanted to, you know, let my grandma travel the world. I wanted to take her to like Dubai and Egypt and like just see things that she never dreamed in a million years she would get to see. Um, I wanted to surprise her with a brand new car. I wanted to pay my parents' house off. Like, you know, seeing a family member that you love so much um, continue to decline is so heartbreaking, especially someone that helped raise me, you know. So my why, uh, my why was to give my grandma, you know, the, the re make the rest of her life the best of her life. So I was fighting hard. And so, like I said, when I put my gamer hat on, like nobody on this island is more important to me than my, my mom, my grandma, my husband, my kids. So I didn't go in, you know, wanting to be a bully or labeled bad or, or look like I was just saying terrible things about people because that was edited entirely crazy. <laughs> but I had my why too, you know, um, my mom was a single mom until she met my stepdad, my biological father wanted nothing to do with me. Um, they actually up and I think left the, the city that we lived in. Um, so when my stepdad came in the picture, he raised me, he took on a child he didn't have to take on. Um, so I really wanted to just try to, you know, do something big for them. And, you know, my, my, my dad, my stepdad, my dad is, you know, about to be 60, like, I would have loved to just walk in and be like, hey, retire early, like, you don't have to work anymore. Like, I just wanted to be able to give so much back to the family that has given so much to me. Hmm. Well, I'm glad you got to tell that story on this platform, because that's very powerful. And that's I haven't beautiful. shared that with anybody. So it's an exclusive Jack Vita show. Exclusive. It's an exclusive. So we just talked again with Stephanie, something else I'm going to bring up with you is in episode four, you made the decision to have Rob play the banker. And I think Dawson was the per he was saying, Hey, I'll play the banker. Um, did you regret that? Cause you, you wanted Rob out at that point in time, right? Right. I did not regret that. Um, at this point there had been little, little bits and pieces being whispered back to me. Like Nick was really close with Rob, but what Rob didn't know is Nick and I were you know, going to be ride or die till the end, no matter what. So I knew that Rob, when he says Amy's going to be a problem, like I knew he had his sights set on me and not physically, but I think it's because he knew I was rallying the troops. Like I was trying to form my own thing and he knew I wasn't with him. Um, so I told him, he's like, I want to play. I was like, okay, I'm going to let you play. I was hoping so bad that he lost to the banker and went home. But if he won, and I didn't let him play because he wanted to play. I knew I was going to even be a bigger target. So at this point, I'm trying to kind of take eyes off myself. Like, Rob, listen, I'm not coming for you. I've been hearing you're coming for me. And we did the whole BS. I'm not coming for you. You're not coming for me. But knowing we're both coming for each other. But I thought it might buy me. A, if he didn't lose to the banker, I thought it might buy me at least a couple more weeks where he could take his eyes off me. And that would give me time to finish forming the night house. So I'd have numbers on my side. Um, he ended up, he ended up, um, you know, settling for $49,000, which that surprised me as well. Um, Rob being, be, Rob being in this industry for 20 years, I thought that he might take it a little further to try to put a lot of money in the bank instead of just taking the easy way out. Like, well, I have a, I think it was 75% chance that I can stay, 25% chance. So he only banked $49,000. Yeah, that but I mean, you got to preserve yourself, right? Like you do the same thing. You do. You do have to preserve yourself. Um, 
but like, I guess I like, you have x-ray vision with the banker. You you were just like, <laughs> you know where every case is. Like, well, so I, I was like, you know, like if I'm going to be up here playing, I'm putting my game on the line. Because I went down, when I played in episode six, I went down, me the banker, 50-50. Like if I was going to go home, I wanted to put as much money on, on the board for the next person because that's what it's about is building the bank. So I was surprised, a little bit surprised that Rob actually only left with $49,000. I thought his ego might might want him to put a little bit more than the lowest value, but I was wrong. He, he, he didn't do that, but I do feel like in that moment, the fact that I let him play bought me a little bit of time and that was able, I was able to pull, you know, me and Nick were able to pull in Steph and Dawson, which are two fierce competitors. So, and I could, at that point, I could not, I could afford to lose Rob. I could not afford to lose Dawson because he was a number for me. So if he went home, then I have another number yeah. on my side. So why not try to buy a little bit of time with Rob? So if Rob goes home there, what would you, how would you have foreseen your path to the end? Like, let's say I asked this to Stephanie also, you can like, who are the four people that you are wanting to go to the end with of the people that are remaining? So Rob's gone. Kim's still around because because uh, Claudia is gone, Branson and Jamil. So Branson, Jamil, Rob and Claudia are all gone. Who are the four people that are like at the top of your trust circle of trust? So my circle of trust um, was still was Mar is Miranda still in at this point? Yeah, Miranda's still in. Okay, so, so my circle of trust at this point is me, Nick, and Miranda. Like that that that's it. That's my three. top three. Um, you know, we, we called ourselves uh, Tent 3 or Tent Talk. We didn't really name an alliance, but we just had an understanding. <laughs> you it's guys a, all slept in the same tent, yeah. Right, yeah. We, we shared living spaces. So it, it's top three no matter what. Like, that was my circle of trust because um, I built a relationship with them. Um, you know, once Miranda left, um, I was devastated. I was heartbroken. I cried all freaking night. Um, that, that was just almost broke me and then I was like no I've got to keep fighting for her so Nick and I knew we were solid and um, we would talk at night like hey I'm like Dawson is a fierce competitor but he's with Alyssa but I think I can pull him in and then he had had a lot of talks with Steph so um right after Miranda left I was like I I, I knew the four I knew me Steph Dawson yeah. Nick I wanted to I wanted to be ride or die with them so if Miranda stays that's like She's a night owl, and it's you five then, basically. Right. If Miranda stays, um, I was even more aggravated that Aaron tried to use Miranda as a pawn in his game, and then Miranda exposed it, which helped my game even more because it it yeah. gave me an edge to be like, well, why why are you so against Rob and Aaron? Why are you so against Rob and Aaron? Because you tried to take out my best friend in the game. Like, it is still a game. It's not personal, but shots fired. You know, like, you guys, <laughs> right. shots fired. You started this. Like, I'm going to go as hard as I can for my girl. Like, you guys just try to manipulate her to do to do what you wanted to do. And it did. she has her own mind. She played a great game. She's not going to be a puppet. Like, she's going to do what she wants. And I was so proud of her for that. Yeah, there were a lot of points where Aaron played some really he had some really good gameplay and then some other gameplay that was kind of like ooh a little shaky there and I think he I mean granted he was put in a tough position where he had to manipulate after being exposed as kind of the person that everyone trusted and he had to play a, a game where he had to screw over a couple people but the way that he tried to put a spin on it to Miranda she did not buy it at all and it seemed like he was. It, he seemed like okay, cool. Miranda's in on this, and it looked like she played him pretty good. Oh yeah, she. You know, Miranda is such a very strong, um, mentally, physically, very, very independent. Um, you know, she knew. She knows she has Nick and I on her side. Um, but she, I mean, she could see right through it. She was like, I, I'm not buying this for a second. I mean, we all kind of could. Um, but what was so funny is I don't. I don't think Aaron thought in a million years or Rob that if Miranda lost, that she would expose that because Miranda was just really sweet. Let's all get along. I love everybody here. I'm here for the experience. But at the end of the day, Miranda knew this was a game. She was playing very, very, yeah. very low key, which, which is what Jordan did. So, I mean, that yeah. works. 
Um, but I don't think they ever thought in a million years that if she lost to the banker, they'd be like, huh, no harm, no foul, who cares? I don't think they thought she would ex be like, guess what, guys? And so that really, Stephanie was like, and that, in my eye, I was like, okay, now, now lines are drawn in the sand. Now we can play, you know? So I'm so proud of her for that. That, that was, in my opinion, that was such a pivotal moment in the game. And, you know, she wasn't there long, but with the time she was, was mighty. And it was interesting because that was really the only time that, I mean, hey, we'll use Rachel Riley's language here. We'll call Miranda what she is, a floater. And Rebel life says floaters. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so she was floating, and that's a that's a very good strategy. It worked very well for Jordan. You said Jordan and Miranda pretty much played the same game. That was really the only time that we saw somebody put a floater up to play the banker. Because every for up until that point, it was a lot of like, all right, I want this person out, but I don't think they're going to take out the person that like if they were to win, I'm way I'm willing to weigh that risk over the reward. They'll take out somebody, but it's not going to be my closest ally or whatever. So like people are putting up who they want out a lot of times. Then it flips and it becomes, hey, give me the ball. I want to play. You played. Yep. Um, all the night owls played. You guys all said, give me the rock. I want to shoot. I want to take the last shot at the final minutes of the game here. Um, so Miranda just kind of, it was like crap luck for her that that just kind of happened at that point. Because yeah. if that hadn't happened, nobody else seemed to be going after the floaters. So she could have very well been there at the very end too. Absolutely. I, I have no doubt that if Miranda would have beat the banker um, that night and sent Alyssa home, I have no doubt the whole trajectory of the game would have changed because I, I still think we would have, you know, me, Nick and Miranda, we know no matter what final it's us three to the end, but I really think we still would have pulled in um, Steph and Dawson. Um, so at that point, you know, there's, there's five of us, six of us. So I, I just really feel like that. I, I feel like she had a really, really good chance to go far. She's so smart and so athletic. Um, I, I, I really see her going pretty far. So that, yeah, it would have been, I think five of you guys with seven left. So then it would just leave right. Robin, Aaron or eight, Robin, Aaron eight. and Jordan and Jordan on the outside. And Jordan's kind of floating with you guys a little bit. So mostly Rob and Aaron. Right. Yep. It would have been five, five to three. I mean, we would have still controlled the numbers. And a lot of people ask me, like, you know, what was the point of forming an alliance? Like, you know, we hear Boston Rob say that you really don't need to form alliances in this game. And if you're forming alliances, like, are you playing too hard? And I'm like, you know, I, I see that strategy. But for me, the Night Owls, I feel like that was an amazing thing because, you know, Miranda plays and she can't get – um, I, I call them the Rob Mob. Miranda plays, she can't get the Rob Mob out. And then I play and I can't get somebody from the Rob Mob out because of the banker's bonus. Um, I beat the banker. I just, it, it nullified taking anybody out. And then Dawson played, which he wasn't coming after me. Nick played, he wasn't coming after me. Steph played, she wasn't coming after me. So for five episodes, I felt completely safe and only yeah. because of my alliance. So, you know, Feeling safe allowed me mentally to focus on other parts of the game and not worry so much about, am I next? Oh, my gosh. Do I have to go schmooze Rob or schmooze Aaron or, you know, try to be fake and act like I'm with them? I, I didn't have to do that because I was so um, tied in with my alliance. Yeah, and that was, I mean, it's a social game. And that's Jordan won. She never played the banker until the very end when she got to win money from the banker. Okay, you know what? I'm really curious to know because you, first of all, I think Brooke pointed this out on our recap this week, and she said that you were really good all season long with the banker in terms of like, okay, that's this case. You were very good at picking the cases. You said at the finale, I would keep going, but I'm a psycho at that point. So how do you think that would have played out for you? Do you think you're taking home like multiple millions of dollars instead of the 1.3 million or 1.23? Like, if I'm being completely honest, um, 
I walked when I we walked into um, Temple that night. You know, I was like, I know I'm not playing, but I'm gonna pick a case and I'm just gonna try to keep up with what would be. You know, because this could have very well been me, uh, if not Jordan, me. You know, I was second place, so I was like, I would have picked case number 18. Uh, my my son's birthday is March 18th. Um, I'm not really fond of the number three, but like the number eight is big to me. So 18 has eight in it. My firstborn kid. Um, the first one I'm trying to send to college and, you know, help pay for stuff and not have a debt. And 18 was the big one. 18 was the, the biggest one on the board. Um, I think it's so crazy. It didn't show so this 18 either. 18 had the, you picked, you would have picked 18 and 18 had $13 million in it. Yeah. That's unbelievable. That's unbelievable. And it's so crazy if people are, people are like, you say that now that you know, but I, I said, I, I told that to Miranda Dawson, and I think even Nick going in, I was like, okay, 18 would be my case. Like, So I verbalized that before Jordan. I believe it because the track record, I mean, you're standing on some merit here with your ability to pick these cases. What's the secret? What, like, are you switching numbers each time? Like, oh, yeah, I'm behind the feeling scenes. it one night or? No, what's so crazy is um, when I said I would keep going, but I'm a psycho. Um, Nick was like, <laughs> what numbers would you choose? And I said, I would get rid of seven and 11, and then I would stop. And after the fact, um, just for um, clarification and just to show what was on the board matches, they do open the cases so we could see you guys at Selling TV. Seven and eleven were both extremely low numbers, so I think I would have. I think I would have went home with every bit of five million plus, um, just because I, I'm I'm a gambler. I'm not there to walk away with a couple hundred thousand. Like we're gonna go big or we're gonna go home. And I proved that when I played the banker the first time. I took it down to 50-50. Not saying I would have done that this time. Yeah. Um, but I definitely would have would have pushed the narrative a little bit more because I just am a risky person. But you know, I just trust my intuition. Um, I've I've been very I'm a very, very intuitive person. I'm very in tune with myself. I can read a room really well. I just I really just follow my gut. And you know, that's what I did. Like episode four. Four, I think it was when me and Steph were on the paddle boats, we were like, we want a key. Like a lot of people probably aren't going to go for a key. We want a key. We want to secure one of us playing or maybe it was episode. I don't remember what episode it was, but like we want to secure one of us play, uh, playing. We wanted the ball in our court and it said a big reward. So we didn't know like, are we both going to get a personal offer or is, are we going to, if we beat the banker, are we going to be immune next week? Like we didn't know what big reward meant. And um, little did we know, it just meant you put a lot of money on the board. Um, but, you know, I was like that one right there. And we went straight to that that chest and it had a key in it. So I just I just trusted my gut uh, my entire life. And nine times out of ten, it hasn't failed me. So I was like, please don't fail me now. <laughs> I think it's interesting how people pick the cases because I'm watching it. And people are like, oh, my my nephew was born on the 12th. Let's pick the 12. And I'm sitting yeah. there thinking like, no, that's a good number. You want to take out the bad numbers. So think about, okay, what was the date of like your, your ex-wife divorcing you? Yeah. Or your yeah. car broke down on the 14th. So I want the 14th. <laughs> like, yeah. Those yeah. are the numbers you want to knock out, right? Right. Yeah. Yep. You want the good ones in play. <laughs> You know, I agree with that. And the way I looked at it, though, I was like, you know, I'm going to pick number eight. Um, I got married in August. I got engaged in August. My son's soccer number was eight. He's, his birthday has 18. And, you know, like I picked that number to be my number because I knew I was going to, no matter what number I picked, I was going to rock with that till the very end. Like I just knew my number was going to be good. And it was for me. So um, I picked a number that was good for me that, you know, not anything I needed to be low. How was that night, the final night, you and Jordan? We didn't get to see it because we just moved ahead. Uh, what was that night like and the morning waking up and the reflection, all that? The night was so emotional because when we when we realized we're final two, um, we both broke down a little bit leaving the excursion because we just lost Steph. Steph was one of my great friends. And one of my, you know, me, me and Miranda were close. Me and Steph got just as close. So it really, it really hurt to see her go. Um, but at the same time, I'm like, we finally got Rob out. Like one of us have a fighting chance. Um, but when we, when we walked back into camp, projector, 
set up for us. We got to see videos from home. I got to see my husband. Um, this part makes me so emotional. I got to see my husband, you know, still cheering me on and being so proud of me. I got to see two of my three kids. My my other son had a football game that night, so he wasn't able. He's the starting center, so he, he better not miss that game. I would have been mad at him. So, um, <laughs> But I got to see two of my three kids wishing me luck and doing, you know, I love you, Mom. And that really just gave me all the fight I needed. Jordan got to see um, a, a message from her mom and husband. So, you know, going so long without seeing your loved ones, um, that really, I think, lifted both of our spirits. And we're like, we're we're at the finish line. This is what we needed to quit. So we gave each other a hug. I told her, you know, whether it's me or you, we both have our reasons. I mean, everybody had their reason, but, you know, we both knew each other's reasons in pretty detail. So I'm like, whether it's me or you, whatever's meant to happen has happened. Good luck. Like, I love you to pieces. You're such an amazing person. Um, you genuinely care about every single soul. And, you know, finale night, seeing it play out, I, I just literally melted in my husband's arms and I, I sobbed the entire episode because I was like, I was this close. Like, I feel like I let you guys down. I feel like I let my parents down and I'm just an emotional wreck. But, you know, those emotions transformed halfway through the episode seeing Jordan win and me giving her a hug and knowing that she wants to be a mom so bad. And you, you can't put a price tag on being a mom, you know, and I've got to experience that. My, my kids are 13, 18 and 19 years old. So I've got to experience that for 19 years of my life. Um, so I, I gives me chills thinking about it right now, knowing that this money is going to almost guarantee some form or fashion, she gets to become a mom. I, I melt it. You know, my tears turn so happy. I messaged her immediately. I had no idea she was pregnant. Like we were all together in yeah. February at a New York experience and we did. So that was such a surprise um, that I literally melted. I messaged her and I was like, Auntie Amy, you're never getting rid of me. I can't wait to see the baby. So, <laughs> um, so incredibly, incredibly happy and so proud of her. Even, even though, you know, it, that meant me losing. I was so grateful that it was her. Awesome. Well, season one, huge hit. Just got renewed for season two. If they are going to do this format where they've got kind of like a, a star to build the show around from Survivor or any really re reality show, who do you think should be the star for season two? If I just had to pick one person? One person. Um... I, you know, I, I'm going to say Steph. I, I'm going to say Steph. Um, you know, her and I, her and I get grouped together a lot. The bullies, the mean girls, the, you know, jerks, whatever. But if anybody went into this, not caring about what America thinks, not caring what edit I'm going to get, not caring <laughs> about anything, but winning yeah. this money, it was her and I, um, but, but definitely her, but Steph, what a lot of people don't know is Steph is a midwife. Steph has sued the state of Alabama. Steph has fought tooth and nail to get women's rights, um, reproductive rights and all things approved. She's opened a, uh, a midwife, like a, um, the birth sanctuary, like she's doing so much to change women's lives. Um, she get she was pl she was playing for her dream and her goal of, of better health care for, for for pregnant women. So that touched my heart as well. Um, I admire her. She didn't have any filter. I mean, I didn't have a filter either. But Steph was like, I don't have a filter. It is what it is. I'm not playing. I'm playing for my mission. I'm playing for you know my passion. So if there's an if there's an you know like you said if it follows the format and you know season four or five keeps going as I really think it will. Um, and there's an all-star season. I would be completely shocked if they didn't bring Steph back. That'd be great to see. Okay. We've got uh, only a couple minutes left here. Is there anything else that you want to talk about from your experience that you haven't gotten a chance to talk about? You know, on one show? thing I do, one thing I do want to clear up is this, um, you know, a lot of people are like, you love your husband and kids so much, but you swore on their life. So, Oh, yes. Yeah. I'm glad you brought this up. Here's the thing. Here's the thing. 
I went up to Boston Rob and I said, listen, final two, me and you, let's do it. I knew Steph and Jordan were talking. I didn't know until watching the show back that they both were like, I don't want to face Amy in the end. She's a fierce competitor. Um, that was a huge compliment because I, I, I would have thought that they'd be like, oh, I, she's an, I can beat her easily. But, you know, they were like, she fights. She does not give up. So I knew they were kind of talking. I've seen them talk, you know, off here and there. There's only four of us, so you can have eyes on everybody, right? So I kind of felt my intuition. I kind of felt in my gut they were they were trying to form something. And I'm like, you know what? Rob and I have been at, at each other's throats all season. I'm going to go up to him. I'm going to say, listen. I was like, listen. I grabbed my little necklace. I was like, I swear on my kids. My husband's like final two. And I meant that. But what America doesn't understand is, we, did, we had no idea that we're walking into a double elimination. I, I think we're walking into, because I'm not keeping up like this is episode this, this is episode this, you know, I'm not keeping up with that. So I'm like, we're going to walk in, another person's going to play the banker, another person's going to go home, and then it's going to be kind of like Big Brother. There's three people left, and we have the competition between one and two and two play. Like, we don't know what this is going to be like. So when I swear on my kids, if, if there was an angle where I could take Rob over Jordan, I would have because Jordan is so athletically inclined, like she's so good. But what America doesn't understand is when it came down to it, the two girls, I knew the two girls were already out of the maze. I could hear them. They were happy. So it came down to me and Rob. So at this point, I, I, I swore on my children to take them to final two, but I didn't have the opportunity to take him to final two. Like that decision is not there. It's a double elimination. The first one back um, out of me and Rob stays in the game. The other one goes home immediately. So when people say she's around her kid's life, I, I plan to uphold that. But when we walked into this excursion and realized it's a double elimination, that conversation was null and void because I, I have no angle. Nobody has any angle to not not send you to play the banker or get immunity and make sure you don't get to play. You know, like that, that just that, that's how that worked out. It was a total different excursion. So I did wanted to clear that up. I'm a I'm an excellent mom. My kids love me. I adore them. My husband's my best friend, my number one fan. He's not divorcing me because I'm evil and I'm going to hell and like, get out of here with that. Yeah. And also like swearing on your kids doesn't do anything. Like, <laughs> I know my daughter was like, you could have had your, like, did you say no crosses counted? Because if you didn't say no crosses counted and you had your fingers crossed, it didn't count. And I'm like, my kids are like, people think my kids are like two, five, and six. Like, my kids are 13, 18, and 19 years old. They know this is a game. They know mom's going to do any and everything she can to try to change our lives. So, you know. Yeah, but, it, and, and like, God isn't like, oh, this person. Okay, so like, my if my brother just decided to like swear on my life and like, I, now I got to, I'm going to die or You're gonna gonna die because my brother, my brother doesn't have that ability. It doesn't, right. like, it's just like something. It's something that people say to be like, I'm sincerely true. This is like, listen to what I have to say. Like, I'm I'm serious. And that's what you were doing. And right. I think you could tell based off of moments where maybe you weren't as truthful. Like, there was a level of sincerity oh, in yeah. this moment that was not there in other moments. So. You can tell when I'm being very sincere, when right. I'm just trying to say something. So people would be like, okay, like, yeah, I'm, I'm cool, whatever. Yeah. yeah, you can, you can. You can definitely, when you spend day in and day out with these people, you can kind of see, like, who who's really in my corner and who's not. And you're in good company because Stephanie LaGrosa swore on her kids on Snake in the Grass. She had her fingers crossed. <laughs> she was lying. I, yeah, that's what my 13-year-old daughter literally said. Did you say no crosses counted? And I was like... I didn't say that, but if I would have, I would have had this, but I didn't. <laughs> I'm like, you know, like I said, America is going to love you or hate you regardless of what you do or say. Um, if I won the show and I walked away with six or $7 million, um, not a lot of people know this. I mean, the people like Nick, Steph, Miranda, Dawson, like they know, but I told all of them, like, if I win the show, I, I'm going to, your birth sanctuary is going to get built. Dawson, your own real estate company is going to happen. Miranda, your own bed, uh, love bug company is going to happen. Like I was 100% not in it just for myself. I made genuine connections with these people and I understood their lives and their why. You know, I, I, Jordan was going to get, 
I, I might have had the baby for Jordan. Like, I, you know, I'll be a surrogate, whatever. <laughs> like, I really wanted to pay or pay for IVF. Like, I really wanted to not only win for myself and my family, but meeting these people and becoming so, so close. I really wanted to try to help help everybody change. Like, I wanted to help Aaron with his dad's medical bills. And Aaron and I weren't even that close in the show, but everybody has their reason for being there. And I really just wanted to... I really wanted to try to help everybody and, and do what I could for it's all a big happy season at the end. But, you know, like I said, everything happens for a reason. And, you know, you never know. Maybe I'll have another opportunity at something. Maybe I never will again. And, you know, whether that happens or not, I have literally am so blessed to have this experience and met friends that I will literally be best friends with until I die. And then I'll probably haunt them after, but you know, <laughs> I'm a prankster, so they're not ever getting rid of me. Amy, um, that's very sweet of you. We got to wrap up here shortly, but I would like to know, see so you, you talked about swearing on your kids and then in the maze, you said to Rob, um, there's not another case for you. So it was really just a, you didn't think he was going to believe that, but you were just trying something of like anything to win at all costs, right? Yeah, and what it didn't. There? Yes, what it didn't show is Rob's like, "Don't lie to me, Amy." And I was like, "You're right. I'm lying. That was so dumb." But <laughs> I literally said that. I was like, "You're right. That's so dumb." But I'm desperate because if this comes down to a foot race, <laughs> like you know, I don't know how fast he's gonna <laughs> climb these hurdles. He's so good. But I admitted. I was like, "I was like, you're right. I'm lying. That was dumb." And I kind of laughed at myself at this point. I'm like, "Yeah, whatever." You know, like here we are. <laughs> um, but I just didn't know. I was like, if it comes down, if 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 he comes over these hurdles, like if he gets the key, the case unlocked and makes it over one hurdle before I make it on the last, it's a foot race and I'm done. So I was just trying everything. Like the like Steph and Jordan were like, where is it? And I was like, all the way up to the right. Like I knew good and well that was not all the way up to the right because I think I went there twice and it was a dead end. But at, like I said, at this point, I'm not the most physical player. So I have to... I have to rely on myself mentally and I have to try to do any and everything I can to buy me some time because it could come down to seconds, you know? So I tried everything. Um, Jordan on the rope, you know, I, I, I saw her getting close and I was like, I I'm physically exhausted. I cannot climb these 80 stairs again. So I just started bouncing the rope. I'm like, maybe if I can make her fall, I can get a chance. Cause it was impossible. If two people were walking that rope, it was impossible it didn't show it, but Jordan fell two or three times. I fell two or three times. Um, I think it did show me falling several more times than Jordan, but I was like, I, it's impossible. I'm spent. I cannot do this. So I start kicking the rope. And then I hear people like, Amy is such a cheater. She's so evil. Like, why would you kick the rope and want Jordan to fall? And I'm like, um, it's a game and I'm trying to do yeah. everything I can, you know. So, you know, it is what it is. But again, I'm so I'm so incredibly proud of Jordan. I'm it so happy. It was a savvy for her. move and it was legal. And it was legal. The, no foul, no harm, no foul. Yeah. Okay, Amy, we gotta wrap things up. I think we touched on pretty much everything, right? That's it? I think so, yeah. Okay. So she is Amy McCoy. Her social media and anything she'd like to plug is what? Um, it's OKC Amy underscore McCoy. Please do not follow me just to send me hate mail. I don't read it. I delete it. You're wasting your time. Um, I appreciate it if you're not a fan of me, but I do not need the hate mail. I I'm not even going to read it. Um, but I appreciate all the supporters. I appreciate everyone that watched the show, whether you are a fan of me, Rob, Steph, whoever. Um, the support is phenomenal. That's what got us renewed for season two. So I'd really appreciate you know, people like Jack Vita and everyone just getting exposure and supporting us because it really does mean the world. Well, it's been a lot of fun to cover. Can't wait for season two. Season two. She's I can't Amy wait McCoy. to see what my favorite's going to be. <laughs> Amy, thank you so much. Thank you so much for having me. All right, folks, that concludes our exit interview today with Mrs. Amy McCoy. Great getting to hear her thoughts on everything Deal or No Deal Island. We still got another one of these, and it is with the winner, Mrs. Jordan Fowler. So that's going to be a lot of fun. You aren't going to want to miss it. Rob has already been on here. We talked with Rob. We did a press conference with him a few days ago. Stephanie, we had her on. This was the Amy one. The final one will be Jordan. And 
You guys are all gonna wanna be subscribed so you don't miss out on any of these conversations, any of these content. It's gonna be, it's gonna be great. You guys are not going to wanna miss it. We've got like 80% of you guys who watch or subscribe to the channel. So what are you doing? Hit subscribe and you won't miss out on any of the content that we have coming soon. Deal or No Deal Island may be over, but we'll be bringing you the reality TV content all summer long. Uh, we'll probably, I imagine we'll probably still have some more uh, Deal or No Deal Island content uh, even after these exit interviews and reflective stuff. So it's going to be a, it's going to be great. Make sure you guys are all subscribed. You can follow me on social media at Jack Vita Show on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. And until next time, I'm Jack Vita. Bring in the dancing lobsters. <laughs>